The he that is within you, this is why the enemy is attacking this. He wants to slow us down. Yeah. He wants to play with our emotions. Yeah. It's not bad to have emotions. It becomes dangerous when your emotions have you. Yeah. But the devil wants you to feel bad that you're emotional, that you have emotions. It's okay. We're, we all have a soul. We all have emotions. We're emotionless, we're emotional beings. But when your emotions have you, this is where the devil's trafficking. Yeah. To hinder, to slow down. Let me give you a few truths, four truths. Number one, heal. So when someone's trying to love you, you let them. Heal. So when someone is trying to love you, you let them. <laughs> We've given our heart to people that are wounded. We've given parts of us, our vulnerability to people that are wounded. So it's hard for me to love somebody that is called to love me because I haven't healed from a past pain, a past wound. And some of us just need to unlearn what wounded people have said to us. Heal. Someone, when someone is trying to love you, you let them. You let them love you. The right people, the right vessel. Like I, I've seen people that, 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 that come to churches and they're so hurt from their last church they are so closed to when they go into an actual house that is filled with the glory of God. And I've seen that several times. And it's okay to be like that at the beginning, but I promise you, God's gonna break that off so that you can really be delivered and you can actually trust. I'm not saying trust man, I'm talking about trusting the Holy Spirit in man. Amen. That God is using them, that God is in them, that the Holy Spirit is in them, that they really fear the Lord heal so when someone's trying to love you you let them number two we need to heal from wounds from people who hurt us so we don't bleed on those who help us we need to heal from wounds from people who hurt us so we don't bleed on those who are called to help us I never want to lead while I bleed. You ever see that where you, where you're lead, where you get leaders that are bleeders? And some of y'all are like, I'm not a leader. Whenever you influence anybody, even your baby cuzzo at the family party, you're leading them. You're influencing them. We need to heal from wounds from people who hurt us so we don't bleed on those who help us. It's not saying you don't bleed on those people that are helping you. It's saying as you, you, you're, conti you're continuously playing victim. Whenever I get somebody that continues to play victim, I can tell it's attached to trauma. And trauma is just an unhealed wound. Triggers is just an unhealed wound. It's part of the trauma. We need to heal from wounds from people who hurt us so we don't bleed on those who help us. Number three. This is for a lot of us. <laughs> this, stop depending on the person that hurt you to heal you. Stop depending on the person that hurt you to heal you. Like, why do we continue to go back to the very place that God set us free from? This, this is the Israelites coming out of Egypt. But brother, this, this relationship was from God. But brother, these friendships are from God. Can I just tell y'all there's discernment on knowing when there's an expiration date on a season? Like we continue to drink spoiled, expired milk, getting sick and blaming God. Why do I continue to go back to the very thing God set me free, free from? Like, I know that marriage ended in a divorce. I know that relationship didn't end on the right foot. I know, but what if this is God saying, I'm about to take you to a greater place because it hindered you. Yeah. It hurts you. Mm -hmm. It slowed you down. Father, help us be able to not run back to the very thing you set me free from. Egypt means bondage. When you are in Egypt, when you are in bondage, you are a slave to it. You are a slave to your emotions. You're a, you're a slave to, well, brother, that was the good times. That was the good times, but you ain't, gotta ha you ain't about to have some God times in this next season. That is spoiled milk. It has expired. Yeah. But, brother, we have a kid together, but you're still sleeping with the devil. 
Now, before anybody gets at me, I'm not trying to give marital advice to say you should leave them. You got to go counsel, get counsel from a person that can actually counsel your specific situation. I'm not advocating for divorce. I'm not advocating for separation, but we've all gone through some dysfunctional stuff that we need spiritual counseling and covering over. Can we humble ourselves and at least say that? In fact, I, that would be the last thing I would ever want anybody to go through. Because I know it hurts. But let me just share this. I'd rather you be set free. Amen. Discern the difference between cycles and seasons. Mm -hmm. Just get through the season, brother. Get through the season, sis. Get through, get through. You got to push through the season. Seasons, we break through. Toxic cycles, we break in Jesus' name. So you break cycles, but you break through seasons. But if it's the same toxic cycle in another season, something needs to change. Yeah. Discern cycles and seasons. Stop depending on the person that hurts you to heal you. Yeah. Woman at the well, stop depending on another man that isn't Jesus to help comfort you as a modern day prostitute in those times. Now, I'm not talking about and trying to glorify her prostitution. I'm glorifying God and how he uses even a person that's dysfunctional, but is willing, is willing to come to Jesus. That's, that's it. Are they willing to surrender to Jesus? Are they willing to go with Jesus? Are they willing to surrender everything? That's it. Why do we keep running back to the very thing that God set us free from? Last thing, number four. Very, very simple. Number four, how you see is how you heal. How you see is how you heal. Because when you see it from your perspective, when you see it from your lens, it, you're always going to find things like, okay, this or that. Or it, how you see is how you heal. I need to see it from God's ways. I need to see it from God's perspective. I need to get me out of me. You need to get you out of you. We don't crave God because we're so full of us. We don't crave God or want him because we're already so full of this fast food. Mm -hmm. Thinking, oh, a family's gonna heal us. Having children's gonna heal us. Getting married publicly in front of our dysfunctional family is gonna heal us. Jesus is gonna heal you. Nothing else. You could spend 20, 30, 40 racks on a marriage. That ain't going to help your marriage. Right. Only Jesus is. Yeah, we want to make it look like all glamorous. And yes, let it, let it honor God. But let it start within before it goes without. Amen. How you heal is how you see. Jeremiah chapter 1. Remember, this is Jeremiah saying, Lord, I'm a youth. I, I can't speak. I don't know what to speak. Then the Lord, verse 9, Jeremiah 1, 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set to you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. You know what I love about this? Just like when Jesus gave an invitation to healing and Jesus started to uh, focus on the woman's repentance at the woman of the well. Go call your husband. He dealt with the sin before he allowed her to continue to come. He, he gave her a little, hey, are you open? I'm open. Okay, let's deal with the sin first so I can really help you through your healing. And sometimes dealing with that sin is right here in verse 10, to root out and to pull down to destroy and to throw down. But God doesn't just leave you there. He wants to build and to plant brand new things in you and in your life, in your mind, in your soul, in your heart. I'm telling you, this process of mine, I'm still going through it. But I thank God that those couple first years were one of the hardest years. I'll tell anybody, their first couple years in ministry, probably, and I'm talking about where you've said yes to Jesus 100%, might be the most challenging times because he has to root out, pull down, destroy, <laughs> and 
and throw down. But then those next years of regeneration, renewing, healing, planting, building, God needs to build you before he builds the things around you. That's how God works. I need to build you before I start to build what you're called for, build the things around you. This is why I desire for people to have a relationship with Jesus because I can't give them the step-by-step -step blueprint. I promise you I can't. I can only encourage, I can only be a vessel, I can only be an instrument, I can only help you build that bridge, but I can't be the answer, Jesus will be the answer. Moreover, verse 11, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I'm ready to perform my word. We need to see. I'm pleading, begging to God by myself, Lord, I pray you enlighten the eyes of my understanding. Lord, I know I'm going through a hard season, a hard time right now, but Father, unveil my spiritual eyes and ears. Lord, let me see because when I see well, he is ready to perform. When I see, not when I walk by sight, but by faith. He is ready to perform his word. He is ready to perform his promises. Peter, launch thy net over. And I know you toiled all night, but he says, Lord, at your word. I'm going to launch my net. At your word, when, he, when the spies came by, all the spies saw the giants when they went out into Canaan, into the promised land, and they spied it out for 40 days. They thought that those giants were bigger than our God. They thought those giants, and we we're like grasshoppers to them. And then here comes some bold men, Caleb. They were like, hey, be quiet. Our God can doubtly take that over. Because they saw. I get your situation right now. It's hard to see because you're hurting. I get your situation right now. It doesn't even make sense. One chapter needs to close so a new chapter can open. Amen. One door needs to be an exit strategy so that you can enter into a new room of glory. You know how important exits are for us in the kingdom of God? Exits are so important that the Lord made a whole book out of it. It's called Exodus. It was God's people exiting from bondage, exiting from slavery, exiting from the former things, from the past. In order for me to enter a new room, I have to exit an old room. I can never enter into new doors unless I've exited an old door. That's what it's going to take to heal. That's what it's going to take to get to the next level. And there are people that have an expiration date on their forehead around you and they're no longer going to help you and accelerate you in this next season. I'm not saying they're the devil. I'm not even saying they're the enemy. I'm just saying they're not attached to your assignment and they're definitely not attached to your healing process. That doesn't mean we're gangs. It doesn't mean that we're, coming, we're looking at each other and getting jealous and comparing. No, it's just saying they're not assigned for you in this next season. And that is okay. That's protection, not rejection. And if you're ready to say yes to Jesus, as long as Jesus is in the room. I'm going to push out everybody but my three disciples, the mom, the dad, Jairus, and the wife so that I can resurrect things in this next season. But you know what you have to do? You got to push out everybody in that room. Yeah. Everybody that is living rent-free right here in your mind that you have leased your ear to, that does not hear a sound of an abundance of rain that comes from heaven. Yeah. Elijah heard a sound of an abundance of rain, and it was three and a half years drought, dry, no water. People are going to look at you and say, you can't do it. You don't got the degrees. You don't have the resources, but I got Jesus. And if I heard the sound of an abundance of rain, yes, I was driving as a, driving as a Uber or Lyft driver in this season, but I'm about to take divine revelation and ideas. Let me just tell you, ideas are the new oil today. Yeah. We're going into series ahead, ahead in the next season on oil. And I've been sitting on this, marinating on oil for a while. Why? Because I want God's children to break out of what they're called for. 
What you steward privately is how you're going to show up publicly. And it's time. It's time to take dominion as his children. But I really felt in my spirit that we need to heal first. Because if I can't recognize I need to heal, it's going to be hard to be an oil carrier in this next season. I need to heal. But if you don't recognize you need healing, it's going to be hard. So God, I just want to be able to give you everything and put it at your feet. And maybe for some of us, it's Isaiah 58. You need to fast. Isaiah 58 says fasting that afflicts your soul. So if your soul doesn't get afflicted during fasting, does this fast really please God? Fasting that loosens the bonds of wickedness. Fasting that breaks chains of old thought processes and mindsets that have kept me and my family bound. I need to get right with God because where he's taken me, and let me just tell, I believe everybody already got it. Moses, what do you got? What's in your hand? Peter, what do you have? Your net, what do you already have? God already gave it. Yeah. Let the oil that only comes from the empowerment, the, the grace from the Holy Spirit, activate. Let the anointing activate through you as his disciple. Because as we get into this next, next season of, let's see, who, I'm, I'm, we're going to know who our real oil carriers are this year. You're going to see more oil carriers publicly this year. Remember, we got excited. People get excited. 2024, the year of the open door. Now you're blaming God of the closed doors. It's because you still got a devil in your room that you're trying to bring into that door. God's like, nope, you can't bring him. Let's see where all the oil's at. Where are my oil carriers at? Oil carriers or glory carriers? Both. Heal, sis. Heal, bro. So you don't have to attract people that you think need to heal you. Yeah. Heal, sis, so you don't have to attract toxic men who you think need to heal you. Heal, bro, so you don't have to attract toxic women who you think are going to heal you. Heal. Go through that recovery season. We got a whole teaching on recovery. You have to go through recovery seasons. In Jesus' name.